Thank you for the introduction and for letting me give this talk. So today I will talk about part of my recent work on some parking function enumeration problems, and specifically about a collection of sums that seems to pop up in quite a few places. And that's also what motivated me to think about the sum in, in a more general way. So a brief outline for the talk, I'll first tell you about this collection of sums, and then discuss a bit about their evaluation, and then in the second part of the talk, I will just briefly show you about show you several cases where the, these sums appear. Okay. Right. So this is a collection of sums over Kasselin path or deep path, and I'm sure most people here know what they are. But for our interests, we are we are going to define a vector for every Kasselin path C. We define this vector U of C, which records the length of the maximum block of consecutive up steps. So for example, for this Catalan path here, it starts with a block of three consecutive up steps. The first entry in this vector is three. And then there's two down steps that we don't care about. And after that, there's a block of one up step. So the second entry is one, and the third entry is two because the next block has length two. And then the last entry is one because there's this, one, this block of one up step here. And again, we don't care about the down steps. And some that will introduce momentarily the sum will be expressed in terms of the entries of this vector u of c. Okay. All right, so before doing that, let me just briefly mention that we can do the same thing for other path families. So for example, for the set of k cation path, where now the up steps have size k, we can similarly define this vector u of c to be 2, 1, 1, because there's a block of up step here, a block of 1 here, and a block of 1 here. And for through the path or Moskin path, where we now allow some horizontal steps of length either two or one, again, we can similarly define this up step ve vector. And still, we, we only care about up step and not the down steps or the horizontal steps. Okay? And I'll briefly mention some results for these other path families later on. But the focus will be on the sums of the sort of cation path. So they will be of the following form, where we have some sort of weight function f defined on the set of positive integers. And for each Catalan path, the thing we're summing is a product over the entries of the vector u of c that I just defined. And we're taking the product of the function f applied to the i's entry of this vector, OK? So for example, if f is just the identity function f of x equals to x, then this sum we will be summing over the product of all the entries in the vector u of c, OK? And for different applications, it turns out that we will choose different suitable weight functions. And also it turns out that for some applications, we might be looking at the variant, these two variants where we either omit last term in the product, like in this case here, or we omit the first term in the product, okay? All right, but in general, this will be the type of sum that we will be looking at. And now let's look at evaluation. So how do we evaluate these type of sums? Um, it's actually fairly straightforward. So we just need to find a good decomposition of cation path and then do this recursively. So there are many ways to do it, but one particular way that works in this case is what I'm calling the canonical decomposition, although there might be different names for this in the literature, but let's just call this for the purpose of this talk. So every cation path can start with a block of some number of consecutive up steps. Let's say that's L. In our example here, it starts with a block of three consecutive up steps. And then we can identify three unique down steps as follows. So we, so for example, this first one will be the first time this Catalan path leaves level three and goes to level two. And the second one will be the first time this path leaves level two and goes to level one. And then the third one will be the first time it leaves level one and goes to level zero. From this definition, these three blue down steps are uniquely determined. And also from definition, it follows immediately that between any two of them, the portion of the cation path will also be a smaller sub cation path, okay? And it's also very easy to check that this uh, process is, is reversible. So this gives us a decomposition of a larger cation path into a bunch of smaller ones, where the number of smaller ones is the length of the first block of up steps. And that's basically what will allow us to do sort of some sort of recursion in the computations. 
And before moving on, let's just quickly note that the vector u of v that we defined earlier that records the length of an effective object. So under decomposition, first entry will be L because we're assuming that the first block has size L. And then the rest of the vector will just be a concatenation of the vector u of z1 all the way to u of zl because each block of upsets it's not broken into pieces by this decomposition. It will be, it will always be entirely contained within one of these smaller cuts. Okay. All right. So using this decomposition, we can prove the following fairly general result, which is that for any weight function little f, if we let capital F be the generating function of this weight function, then the sum over the set of cation path of length 2n of this product would just be equal to one over n plus one times the x to the n coefficient of the product of the power series f x to the power of n plus one. And the proof is as follows. So using this decomposition and considering the generating function p for this for this collection of sums, then we will get the following functional equation that p satisfies. And this is because, so for example, it starts with a block of L upset. And from definition, that means that we need to include a vector f of l. And then we have a factor x to the l to record the fact that we have just used x upsteps, uh, l upsteps. And then for each of these little sub cation paths, we are doing the same thing as what we're doing to the, the original one. And that corresponds to a factor of p of x. And because there are l of them, we have a factor of p of x to the l. And the last equality just follows from the definition of the function f of x here. So how we get this functional equation p of x equals to f applied to the function x times p of x. And then the last step is just a standard application of the Lagrange inversion formula. And if you just plug this into the formula, this is what uh, the, the formula that we will get for the evaluation of this sum. Okay. And right, so very briefly, let me just mention that by adapting this decomposition uh, suitably to other path family that I mentioned earlier, we can also obtain similar evaluations when we're summing over the set of k-cation path or the Fruder path or the Motzkin path. And the first two are relatively nice formula about summing over Motzkin path and how it's slightly more complicated. Um, and also the two variants that I mentioned earlier where either the first term or the last term are omitted, we can again similarly uh, modify things a little bit to get the formula for those as well. Okay, so that's the summary of thumbs and their evaluations. So now let me just show you where these things pop up. So there's at least three three places where they pop up. So first is in the study of pattern avoidance and parking functions. So there are many ways to define a notion of pattern avoidance in parking functions. But one way, for example, is to just sort of borrow the notion of pattern avoidance in permutations directly. And we say that a parking function avoids a pattern sigma if its final parking position, so where each car goes, uses a permutation in SN avoid sigma. And under this notion, if we look, if we define pkn of sigma 1 to sigma k to be the number of parking functions that avoids all of these little patterns sigma 1 to sigma k, and it turns out that there are several of these cases that where this sum appears. So for example, it turns out that the number of parking functions that avoid the pattern one, two, three is given by this sum, where the weight function we pick is just the identity f of x equals to x. Well, the number of parking functions that avoid the pattern two, one, three is given by this, where we are using the weight function factorial function. And the reason for these two is that there's a fairly well-known bidirection between permutation that avoids any length three pattern and the set of Catalan paths. So if we just look at that bidirection a bit more carefully, computing the number of parking functions that avoids the pattern one, two, three is kind of like a weighted sum over the set of permutation that avoids the pattern one, two, three. And by inspecting it more carefully, it turns out that the correct weight under this bidirection, which turns out to be exactly the product over the entry in this vector u of z. Okay. And similarly in the case of 2, 1, 3. And because we have a very general result on how to evaluate these things earlier, um, it's now fairly simple to obtain these two explicit formula for the number of these parking functions that avoid just certain patterns. Okay. All right. 
Um, similarly, for these two other patterns, 312 and 321, we can do the same thing, except that now the weight that it comes out will be something that's slightly more complicated. So as you see here, each term in the product doesn't depend on just one entry in the vector U of C, but it's a sort of cumulative sum of the entries in U of C. And this makes the canonical decomposition method not work anymore, but we were still able to obtain um, so the recurrence formula for these things just by using a slightly different decomposition method. Okay. Um, right. So a second application is a different notion of pattern avoidance. Um, and this is the one that's used by these two authors in their 2023 paper, where they prove that under this different notion, the number of parking functions that avoids the pattern 312 and 321 together is given by this formula, where the weight function we're picking now is f of x equals to 1 plus x. And note here that the last term in the product is omitted. Okay? And we didn't know how to evaluate this explicitly, but now using the canonical decomposition method, we're now able to find an explicit formula for this, for the number of these parking functions as well. Okay? All right. So, a third application is slightly more complicated. So this is on uh, Novelli and Tibon's work on what's called the Hobbes algebra of generalized parking functions. So essentially, they're interested in, um, under some sort of congruence, they're interested in how many congruence classes are there for generalized parking functions, which then uh, translates to Hobbes algebra language is the greater dimension of these algebras. So it doesn't really matter what they are, but the point is that, um, Kind of some also pop up in this setting. So for example, one generalization is called the M multi parking function. And it turns out that the number of hyper Sylvester class, whatever that means, of these multi parking function is given by this formula, where the weight function is now one plus MX. But as you can see here, the first term in the product is omitted. And once again, we can obtain a explicit formula for that by using the general result earlier. And in the case of what's called a meta Sylvester class, we can similarly obtain the formula of this form, where, um, again, so, so in the each term of the product, there is a cumulative sum instead of just a nice simple one. And in that case, again, we are able to get a recurrence formula using a different method. But uh, it's interesting to see whether there was a more explicit way to do that. Okay. Similarly, another generalizational parking function, which they call M parking function, it turns out in that case, the number of hyper Sylvester class is given by this formula, where the weight function is 1 plus x, the first term is omitted, but instead of summing over the set of Catalan paths, we're now summing over the set of M Catalan paths. And once again, sums of this type are easy to evaluate, but, some, but for the meta Sylvester class, we have again some of this type where there's some sort of cumulative sum involved. And interestingly, we haven't been able to get a nice recurrence formula for this, unlike the case when we're just summing over the Catalan path, basically because this other decomposition method we're using in that case doesn't work anymore when it's coming over a more general M Catalan path. So yeah, so one of the open question is to see whether we can do better for sums of this type, where it's not just where the product doesn't just depend on one entry in the vector U of C, but it's some sort of cumulative sum. So whether either in this case or in the case when we're summing over M Catalan path, is there a more explicit formula for these sums or their generating functions? And another interesting question that uh, could be looked into is, I mentioned earlier that we can also obtain very gen fairly general evaluation result for through the path and more scheme path. So, because summing over Catalan path somehow is very closely connected to this parking function enumeration problems, basically because of a bijection between uh, Catalan path and some sort of uh, permutations. Are there some other applications of for these sums over through the path and Moskin path to combinatorial objects that are in bijection with these two things? So that's also something that's um, interesting to look at. Um, yeah, so, but that's the end of my talk and thanks to you for everyone's attention.